Okay, moving on to the mirror box. So I'm going to use my table saw to cut out all of the pieces that I have marked on the half inch plywood for my mirror box. If you don't have a table saw, you can easily use a circular saw. And if you have a very, very steady hand and you're a avid old school woodworker, you can easily use a hand saw. But I'm gonna use the tool that's most efficient for me and that is certainly the table saw for cutting nice square cuts. So whenever you're cutting long sheet goods like this, you want to be very careful to always stand at the opposite of the fence and focus your pressure diagonally and ensure that the piece furthest from you and furthest away from the edge of the saw here is flush against your fence. Otherwise, you may get kicked back. And of course, always wear proper eye gear. So I'll cut right now. Now on each of these longer cutouts, I need to cross cut a section for two. So, you know, you could still try to use your table saw and your fence for that, or again, you could use a circular saw. But what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to reset up and I'm going to do it like a cross cut. So I'm going to use a cross cut sled. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I'm going to show you my cross cut sled set up here. As you can see, on the sled, I have got the two longer pieces that are going to be, I guess you could say the horizontal pieces, and so I need to cut the vertical cuts for the mirror box. And I've got a good true square sled, and what I'll do is, to get accurate cuts with the sled, is I'm going to set up a stop on my table saw. You would never want to use the fence with a cross-cut sled, but you could use a small stop right here because as you see, whenever I push that sled up, the board is, or the wood is going to leave that stop. But then when I want to re-register my next cut, I've got this stop here and I can push the board all the way down. That's going to give me accurate cuts for, uh, for the mirror box for all four sides. So I'll go ahead and get started here and that'll be a short video and we'll get those, uh, We'll get the mirror box, the rest of it cut out. Moving on, time to finish the uh, mirror box cutouts. Okay, here we have all four mirror box sides. There's two right there. I was cutting two at a time, if you didn't notice that. I had stacked them and I was cutting two at a time just because it's faster. And then, of course, here are my other two. Now we'll go through uh, the front piece of the mirror box is actually going to be not quite as high as the other three sides. And then, of course, we still have to make the cutout for the uh, fans and the cutouts for the switch and the potentiometer for the fans. So, and then of course we still have to make the box joints on the side. There's quite a bit work still to do on the mirror box. But from here, what we'll do is the simplest thing first, which is to 
shorten the front side of the mirror box so that whenever it's in the rocker box, it can clear whenever you're pointing it down um, in the vertical. So we'll do that next. All right, before I get too far ahead of myself here, I kind of like to go back on the four pieces I cut out with for the uh, mirror box. And, you know, as you could see in the videos prior, I was cutting from the large sheet. And although I feel like it's pretty square right now and I could probably move on without any type of issue, what I will always do is I'm going to go back and trim off maybe a 32nd inch of wood at a time to true up these four pieces because the way I join the boxes together isn't just using simple dado or butt joints and screws. I'm actually going to end up using finger joints or box joints and if one of them or all of them are out of square, it can make the glue up not only inaccurate from square, but also whenever those finger joints eventually aren't touching each other flush, you're obviously not getting as strong a joint because there's less glue up area. So now that I went over that, um, I'll kind of demonstrate how I'm going to square these up. So what I'll do is I'll set my fence and my mirror box is 16 inches high. And so I always cut it just a little bit long. So right now it's 16 and an eighth. So I have room to kind of trim off. What I'll do is I'll set my fence to just over 16 inches and I'll use a square to my saw blade to ensure that I am truly the same distance from the front of the blade to the back of the blade so I can ensure that I'm going to end up with a square cut. So. Those are just a few little extra steps I take. And I don't just do it on telescopes. I'll do that on just about anything that I am constructing out of wood. It takes longer since I'm doing the videos, but if you're doing this, you know, in a full flow of things, it will take less time. If you don't have a table saw, um, you know, just be very, very careful when you're squaring it up. You can just use a simple square and hit the edge of your box with it that way and just cut until you're square. But the more square you are from the beginning, the easier it's going to be later on whenever you're gluing up. Again, since my mirror box is just over 20 inches wide. I'm going to set that fence at about 20 and an eighth for the first pass and then the second pass I'll set it just slightly smaller than that. And again we just want to make sure we are good and square. these sides and it's going to become the front. Now for the front, again we need the front of the rocker box to be slightly lower than the two sides in the back. That's because as that mirror box, I apologize the mirror box, as the mirror box goes down in the vertical it's going to need to clear the bottom of the rocker box if you're trying to make it as low profile as possible, which why wouldn't you? It saves weight and it saves space. So I've already cut my line um, on a 16 inch F4.5 just because I've done this a number of times. I will typically go three, three inches up from the bottom of the front of the mirror box. So I'll take the fence. I'm gonna move it three inches. Right now it's on 20. I'm gonna move it to 17. And again, I just like to be precise. My fence is extremely accurate. I've never had 
Well, it's rare that I have to readjust it, but why not play it safe every time? That way, if you ever do have to adjust it, you're catching it early in the process rather than later. So we'll cut this last piece. I kind of look at the figure too. Pick the uh, figure that's the ugliest or the least exciting to cut off. That way the prettier part is still on the box. And I'm going from 16 inches to 13 inches rather than from 20 inches to 17 inches. I would stop thinking about the width of the mirror box rather than the height. It's part of the height that we're actually cutting off. There we have it. Now this piece could also serve as your finder board piece for future telescopes or, you know, it could actually even serve for the back of the rocker box for a smaller telescope. So never throw out your scrap wood. Always hold on to that. You never know when you'll need to make a jig or anything else. So next we're going to go ahead and cut out the section for the fans and also the two switches for the potentiometer and the... Uh, on and off switch.